What's up guys? I am back again with another commission. This time we have Sonic vs. Metal Sonic. Uh, before I started recording, I used some Prismacolor fine line markers and some Copic multi-liners to do the outline. And I basically choose those because I like the colors. Instead of going with straight black, sometimes I think it's a little bit more cohesive to go with something that matches the colors that I'll be using for the, uh, for the actual drawing. So right now I'm coloring in his eyes and I'm using a, a red orange, a yellow, and a more of a peach color. I'm blending those to get like this, this subtle transition. I want to get this glow effect on his eyes and in order for me to do it properly, I need to go in with the colors of the eyes first and then this dark red which will surround the eye itself. And once I blend that in with the black color of the inside of his eyes, it'll give it this subtle glow effect. And towards the end of the drawing, you guys will see that I, I use a few more techniques to give this, this overall impression that his eyes are glowing. Right now I am using BV29 which is like a really dark uh, grayish purple color. I like using it in place of black sometimes. This is going to be like the color of his, the black of the inside of his eyes. And I'm leaving a little bit of white area there because I'm going to come in with this RV69. It's a really dark red violet color. And I'm going to blend it with that BV29 and it's going to give this, this transition. It's going to make it look like it's glowing almost like a little uh, a little bit of a heat signature type of a thing going on and that's going to give it that subtle glow effect that I was talking about so that combined with a few other uh, techniques later in the drawing is going to bring the whole thing together Okay, so I've zoomed in a little bit closer so you guys can see what I'm doing with this little muzzle area. Basically, I'm using BB31. This is pale lavender. It's like a light purplish color, and I'm going to use this as the base color for all of the little chrome-like bits in his face and fingers and arms and things like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to do the same thing for his fingers and everything. And later on in the drawing, I'm going to come back with some darker colors, and I'm going to go over it and give it a shiny like finish and make it look like it's reflective. I'll use a similar approach for his head later on once I get to that part but for now uh, I'm just going to do these things and let it dry and then we'll revisit it later on.
so right here I'm using this light fluorescent blue color it's not that fluorescent on paper but I thought it would work good for the specular highlight that I have going on on his head it'll be a little bit on his arm other parts of his body and I have to go in with my lighter colors first because the darker colors are going to go around that and that's going to kind of like carve out the shape and, and kind of bring all those things together so once that dries I'll come in with the darker blue and I'll start to fill in his head and the rest of his body. Alright, so I'm done with the uh, light fluorescent blue for now. I'm going to move on to my dark fluorescent blue which will serve as the base color for his head and body and this is a lot of ground to cover particularly with the head so I decided to skip ahead just a bit to spare you guys alright so you can see at the bottom I left his uh, right above his eyes left it white because I wanted to go in with a lighter blue I used BV24 and I needed a lighter blue because I'm going to blend it with the dark pink RB34 and it's going to give it this purplish like effect and the reason for that is I'm trying to tie that into his eyes because it's, it's kind of the light bouncing up just a little bit so it's going to kind of help give it that glowing eye effect that I was talking about a little bit earlier and once I'm done with that uh, I'll have one more trick later on just to kind of bring it full circle but uh, yeah I'll use BB24 again once I get to coloring Sonic that'll be his base color So we're finally getting into some of the first shadows and I'm using fluorescent violet. It's not really fluorescent either like the other two colors before it but it's a nice rich purple color and it'll work well to bring out that, uh, that shiny uh, like metallic blue that Metal Sonic is. So I'm working my way from the bottom up. First I wanted to get um, right above. The, uh, the reflective light from his eyes and then I'm gonna have like my light source is gonna kind of be in the center because the two are clashing kind of giving off like this energy I guess so I'm gonna have the light source coming from that angle so the shadows have to come from uh, Metal Sonic's left and I'm gonna fill in this entire uh, left side of the drawing using this, this fluorescent violet once it's done drawing I'll have an even darker color to kind of put in between the two and that's what's going to give it that shiny effect in the end.
the head is mostly done for now and right now I'm gonna start doing the same thing with his body and his uh, arms and legs and everything and once that's dry I'll repeat the process with the, the fluorescent violet color to put in that first base shadow and then once that's done I'll start to put in uh, the rest of the finer details on his head and his fingers his face um, all of those things and he'll be just about finished and I can move on to Sonic Alright, I'm using B63, which is a, a light purplish color, and I'm going over his muzzle area and the fingers and everything from earlier in the drawing to give it that chrome finish that I was talking about. Um, I'm going to do this once again with B66 uh, later, and that's going to make it look even shinier. So I'll have like a really nice finish once I'm done.
I finally reached the point where um, I pulled out the B66. This is the dark blue and this will be the last stage in the shadows for all of the chrome bits on his body. So his face and his fingers and all of those things. At this point it's really starting to come together because he's starting to look, take on a really metallic look. And once I'm done with this I'll be able to do a similar thing with his head and his uh, torso area. Okay, we are in the final stages of Metal Sonic. 
At this point, I'm using a really dark uh, fluorescent purple color. It's more of a purplish blue, and this is what's gonna make his head look really shiny. And it also gives it that uh, kind of a core shadow, uh, so you get this, this sense of a, a reflective light behind his head, and then you got the highlight coming from the front, so it looks like he's really shiny. And I'm gonna go around his head doing this, and I'm gonna go under his neck and a few points on his forearm. And at that point, uh, yeah, man, Metal Sonic will be done, and that'll be one half of the drawing down. After that, I'm gonna go into Sonic and repeat a lot of the same steps. He'll just have a less shiny look to him because he's, I guess, he's more organic in nature. And after that, you can work on the background and put on some finishing details. Alright man, Metal Sonic is done. Only thing left to do on him is to add in a few finishing details, but that won't come into play until we start to do the background elements, and it'll make sense why once we get there. But yeah man, overall I'm happy with how he turned out. Metal Sonic is always fun to draw because I like to play up the fact that his eyes are always glowing, and of course the metal textures and you know, just making them look shiny. I find that to be a fun little challenge. So. Moving on to Sonic himself, I'm using this E51 milky white color for all of the fleshy bits on his uh, face and inner ear, tummy, those things. And I'm going to repeat a lot of the same steps that I use for Metal Sonic, but I'm just going to go with a different shade of blue, something a little bit more dull because I think that it should be more of a, well blue is not a natural color, but I want something that is less vibrant but still, you know, pretty vibrant in his own way because he's not painted with like, a, you know, an artificial metallic blue color like Metal Sonic is. So it'll be a subtle difference, but it'll be one that's noticeable in the end once you see the two side by side. So for now, I'm just gonna fill in his skin and we'll get to his blue fur in just a bit.
I wasn't really happy with how I did the shape of that shadow color inside Sonic's eye, but it's not really worth stressing about because it's something that I can correct later using some white ink. But in the meantime, I'm going to move on to Sonic's head, and I'm starting out with the fluorescent blue that I used on Metal Sonic, and it's a similar approach. I'm going to put in this specular highlight. Uh, I'll put in maybe one more between his brow, and that'll be it for that color entirely. I'm moving on to BB24, and this is the base color for Sonic's skin. And like with Metal Sonic, this this bit here is it's a lot of ground to cover using this. I had to refill the marker a few times, and I thought it was boring to watch, so we're going to skip ahead and save you the trouble of watching me go through this boring piece of the drawing. Alright, now that that's out the way, we can start to work on some of the shadows and smaller details in Sonic. I'm going to work on, uh, well first I filled in his eye using that uh, grayish violet color there. But um, I'm going to work my way down to his hands and I'm going to use B63 to put in the shadows on his gloves. Which is the same color I used in Metal Sonic's muzzle and fingers and I kind of wanted to go with that to keep it a little bit more cohesive. This color that I started with wasn't dark enough so I went one shade darker and that's how we ended up with the B63. He's not as complicated a design as Metal Sonic is but I wanted to give him um, just as much detail in his colors so he could stand on his own against his rival in his drawing so it would be just as visually interesting on both sides of the drawing. So once I'm done with the gloves, uh, I'll do something similar with his face and his head and he'll start to come together in the end. It'll look real nice. You guys will see. I'm using B66 for the base shadows on Sonic and you'll notice that I use a lot of the same colors throughout the drawing because I think that by having mostly the same colors it, it gives it this uh, sense of cohesion throughout the drawing. So I'm using this as the shadow color and I'm trying to keep my light source in mind because Again, I have this uh, idea that the light source is coming from the middle, like emanating from this clash, like they're giving off this burst of energy. So, all those sonic shadows will be on his right side, and I'm going to go with a similar, uh, a similar approach to what I did with Metal Sonic, and have a little bit of a core shadow in the center of it all, and it'll make everything pop out just a little bit more.
So all of the base shadows for Sonic are done at this point and now I can put in uh, the final details and I'm going to start with his nose and eyes using BV29. This is that, uh, that color I used in the beginning with Metal Sonic's eyes and right now we're just trying to make him look just a little bit more shiny and uh, I like the way the eyes looked at this point in the drawing but later on in the drawing I kind of overdid it using a white ink and I wasn't really happy with what I did with it but I decided to just uh, leave it alone and not mess with it all that much because I, don't, I didn't want to make it any worse or harder to correct so yeah I, I missed this point in the drawing of Sonic's face <laughs> but it's okay it's, no, it's nothing that can't really affect the entire drawing as a whole so I'm using this, this darker uh, E13 color. This is dark suntan. It's one of my favorite colors for like skin. And I'm I'm putting in those core shadows on Sonic's face. I'm gonna do a bit on his uh, his arm inside of his ear. And I'm gonna do the same thing on his head using the darker blue. And he'll be mostly finished at that point. We'll start to move on to the background in the final details in the drawing.
Sonic is just about done. I'm putting in a few details on his gloves and honestly if we wanted to we could have called the drawing done here but I didn't think it would be right to leave it on that note so I wanted to go on with the background and kind of give it one of those uh, dramatic Street Fighter finisher type backgrounds where it's just this big burst of energy because you have the two of these characters clashing and I mean I, I just imagine that it would, it would have to give off some type of energy because they move at the speed of sound so I'm using this uh, this really bright yellow and I'm kinda keeping my brush strokes in mind with each corner of the drawing trying to go around the center and I want to have it kinda rough because I want those those, uh, those lines to show through a little bit and I'm going to repeat this a couple of times over with a darker yellow and a, um, a darker orange and once that's done I'll go on top of that with the last stage of detail which will be the white ink and for that I'll use uh, a brush and some Dr. Martin's pen white ink I'll go in and do like a few lines and um, I'll go around the characters themselves using the white ink to kind of give them uh, a little bit of a white outline and it'll make them pop out just a little bit more and kind of sell the drawing in the end so yeah we, we basically reached the end of the drawing we just have a few more things to add and we'll be done
I broke out the brush and I am using it with the pen white to put in some rim lights around the characters facing towards the light source and I also used it to kind of correct some of those areas that I didn't like like Sonic's eye and a few other areas like um, his glove and uh, an area on his sock and I'm not really all that strong using a brush because I tend to hold it like I would a pencil and uh, I kind of sketched with it a bit whereas I should have been using it to get more of a smooth line but I did the best that I could considering and I'm moving on to the part the part where I used the Colorase pencil for the last little bit of detail on Metal Sonic's glowing eyes and basically what I wanted to do was um, just kind of blend it out with a, a cotton swab and it blends really nicely with the markers because the Colorase pencils are not wax based and they can be used easily in this way so if you ever want to do something like give characters like a, a little bit of a blush or maybe a glowy effect on the star or something like that it works well for that type of thing. So I've reached the point in the drawing where uh, I overdid it with the ink on Sonic's eyes in terms of the highlights and I wish I had left it alone but I just felt like I needed to make it a little bit better and then in the end I didn't really like the decision I made. But I tried to go in and correct it a little bit using uh, a brush pen in the end. So right now I'm using um, this toothbrush and this old card to flick some of the pen white ink over the drawing in a, in a chaotic fashion. And this is a trick that I learned from a comic book artist years ago on YouTube and I think that it lends itself well to a drawing like this where you have this burst of energy coming from the center. And I'm going to go in with the, uh, the brush one more time to start adding in some um, bigger balls of light coming from the center just to make it look like uh, this burst of energy and this again is one of those things where I kind of wish that I had just left it alone but I committed to it so I had to see it through to the end if I could do it again I probably would have done it with just a little bit more finesse but it is what it is I think overall the drawing still came out pretty good I'm happy with it and I think that it looks cool. I uh, hope you guys also enjoyed this process. And let me know what you think in terms of uh, this approach to uh, commentary on my videos. I'm trying something different with the voiceover instead of just doing it live while I work on the piece. I don't know if I find it easier or more difficult to go and talk about it after the fact, but I figured I would give it a try. So let me know what you guys think. and. I hope you guys enjoy your holiday season, and I'll see you again in the next video. Peace.